I don't want to say much about inverse hyperbolic functions, because at some point we're really just getting into the weeds about functions that really don't show up that often in most fields of applied math or math or engineering or physics, though in some branches I've heard that every once in a while you see these a lot. So you need to know that they're out there. I'd rather save your brain space for everything else we've learned. So the way I see it, anything with an inverse hyperbolic function, you can look up. So there's no need to memorize these formulas, but rather just know that they're out there and know that there's something that you can look up. So for instance, we have the derivative of inverse cosh x is 1 over the square root of x squared minus 1, as long as x is greater than 1. Okay, well that's fine. And then we have all the rest of them. I'd say these are a little more useful when it comes to integration. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so here are the integral formulas. And you can see how this might be a little more useful because we can imagine seeing an integral of the form, something like maybe dx over the square root of x squared minus a squared. We've already seen a lot of integrals very similar to that. And that's one of the things that makes it so confusing is that there are so many integrals that look very similar. Right? Believe it or not, we haven't seen any of these integrals yet, even though they look very close to integrals that we have seen. For instance, we've seen 1 over the integral of 1 over the square root of a squared plus x squared. That was arctan, but we haven't seen the integral of 1 over a squared minus x squared. One more thing, and then we'll work an integral using these formulas. So just like we had the e representations of our hyperbolic functions, for instance, cosh was e to the x plus e to the minus x all over 2, for our inverse hyperbolic functions, we have these natural log representations. And again, we're really getting into the weeds here, so, so I wouldn't expect you to have these memorized, but just know that they exist and maybe try working with them a little bit. But for instance, we have, uh, let's see, how about arc cinch of x? is natural log of the quantity x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. Right, that's equivalent to the E formula for cinch. It's just not nearly as simple. Okay, so now we have enough to try an example. Okay, so let's try this out. Here we want to evaluate the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 over the square root of 16t squared plus 1 dt. Okay, well this is starting to look like a lot of integrals we've seen. But it turns out none of our trig functions hit this integral, or inverse trig functions, so we need to use a hyperbolic function. Let's try the integral that gives the inverse hyperbolic sine. Okay, recall that we had the integral of dx over the square root of x squared plus a squared equals the inverse hyperbolic sine of x over a plus c. So that's the formula that will be useful here. But again, it looks a lot like all the other formulas that we've seen. So you really have to be careful and discern which one you want to use for the form of integral that you're working with. So we'll need to do a little bit of u substitution here. How about if we let u, let u be, uh, how about 4t? Because then 4t squared gives us 16t. So then, because, right, why would we do that? Well, this formula only works on x squared. There's no, there's no constant in front of it. Our a is 1. Right, so, so that's not the problem here. It's that there's no constant in front of this x squared, so we need to write this as something squared. Well, that something is 4t. That just leaves us with a du that we have to think about. Okay, so then du is 4dt. So that tells us that dt is du over 4. Plugging that in up here, gives us a new integral. So now we have the integral of 1 fourth of 1 over square root u squared plus 1 du. Ah, but let's not forget about our limits of integration here. u of 0 equals, well, 4 times 0 is 0, and u of 1 is 4 times 1, which is 4. So our integral now is from 0 to 4. So now we'll hit it with this integral formula. What a fancy thing. What a fancy formula. So this gives 1 fourth inverse hyperbolic sine, that's quite a mouthful, of x. Well, in this case, that's u over a. Well, a is 1 in this case, evaluated from 0 to 4. Well, now the question becomes, how do we plug in 
zero or an, and four into this u. Like for instance, what is inverse cinch of four? I have no idea. So that's where these formulas up here come in handy, right? So let's convert this over into logarithmic form. So we have one fourth times natural log of x plus, or I guess make that u in our case. Let's be, let's be careful here. I guess it doesn't really matter. u plus square root of u squared plus one. And we're evaluating this from zero to four. All right, plugging everything in here, we get one fourth times the quantity, all right, natural log of, so that's four plus the square root of what, 17, minus, if we plug in zero, we get natural log of one. Well, natural log of one is zero. So I'm just gonna come up here for the final answer. How about natural log of four plus the square root of 17 all over four? All right, so plenty of steps in there, plenty to think about, but really I think it's just important to know that these things exist, these inverse hyperbolic functions, and that there's ways to do these integrals and evaluate them quite nicely. It's just that sometimes you may need to look up some of these formulas. There's only so much you can carry around in your brain.